personal effects. This is the third workshop in the Spark Stella Awards 2016. And tonight is all about you guys, all right? It's about what you can do for yourselves to be a little bit healthier, be a little bit more active, maybe even be a little bit more content in your personal life so that you have greater performance not only at work, I mean, yes, this is about customer service, but it's also about being, having greater performance in your own personal lives. And while I would just normally launch straight into our presenters, I am going to do a little thank you to our sponsors. And we have a new one here tonight. And we do like to give things away, yes. We're going to do it at the beginning, all right? Because at the end, we're going to be full of thoughts about what we're going to do in our lives to improve it. So we're going to give away a prize right now. Um, I'd like to introduce Olivia from Talent ID. Just there. Hi, guys. How are we? Good? Yeah. 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 Thank you, Olivia. Of course. Um, does anyone know who we are? Who talent ideas? You heard of us. So we're uh, non existent. This is the first time your banner's been up here, so it's these guys are yeah. brand new visual. But we're, we're not new to Telco. No. So um, we are a recruitment and human resource specialist firm. Okay, so we're not just a normal recruitment agency. We don't operate like a normal recruitment agency, so please don't um, get us wrong. We operate um, Bay Pinty right through to South Rockford, so Telco, Tokarob, Tauru, um, extending through to Cambridge. We work with local, small to medium, some large, really large, more small to medium um, sized businesses. So I'm here today just to give you a bit of insight with what we do and how we conduct our work both on the candidate care side and also on the employer side. We're here, so firstly for employers, we're here to help build and encourage you feeling safer with individual employment agreements, um, how to deal with your staff, how to retain your staff, how to mentor your staff. We're also here to um, tell you how to do disciplinary processes or anything else that um, you feel a little bit unsavvy about. With candidates, we're here to support you and grow you and your well-being. We're here to support and grow you through what you want in your life, where you want to be maybe five, ten years down the track. We, can, we are also here to support and help find you your dream job, okay, based around your terms and conditions. Um, so yeah, our, our, our logo or our strategy is career, team and lifestyle, and that's both for the employer and the candidate alike. Um, tonight I have a little prize to give away. It's an hour free consultation. So it's anywhere from having your CV redeveloped through to interview tips if you're thinking about applying for a new job or if you're an employer if you need some HR consultancy um, clarification or you just want to talk through current strategies or structure you currently got in place. Um, so maybe a show of hands of who wants to hang out with me for an hour. <laughs> Excellent! Um, perhaps, because there were so many hands, someone put up their hand and tell me what I just said, or what we're about. It's my 
a pleasure to introduce Colin Hancock, um, physio from Aspiring Health. Now, I've seen Colin several times myself for injuries, and I know this guy knows his stuff, and he's really good at what he does. So, I think we should give him a clap and listen. Colin. All right. All right, so what we're going to do tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about what you guys can do in your personal lives to get your energy levels up to perform well at work. Okay? So you can give your customers in the morning the same energy as you can give it at night. Okay? So yeah, what we're going to do today is we're going to go through a couple of things. Oh, well, there we go. Oh, actually, the first thing I need to talk about is who we are. We're, we're wellness consultants. Okay? So we, we work in the wellness field. It's all about giving, getting people's wellness and energy levels up. And uh, so you might know us that last year we won the Business Awards which was a, uh, a fantastic moment for us, but um, yeah, we're hoping to be able to espouse some of those virtues to you guys. So, who we've got here tonight, we've got myself, we've got Katie Harris, who's a dietitian, um, and we've got Tanya Dixon, who's a counsellor. So, we're going to talk about some different areas, and, but first of all, we've got one little sheet on, of paper on your, on your uh, seat there, that I'm going to give you guys two minutes to have a quick look at. It's called the Wheel of Life, okay? And what I need you guys to do is to go through the Wheel of Life and mark out of 10 how you think you're performing in each of those areas of your life, okay? Now, if you don't have a pen, just mentally do it. We'll give you two minutes to get through all those areas. <laughs> Mark a dot up your dots and it looks, should look something like that, hopefully not exactly like this, I just got this off the internet, but <laughs> what, what this should try and look like is a kind of wheel, okay, and you know, you want to have a fairly good balance in your life so that th this wheel goes around nicely. Now, if there's something in your life that's way out of kilter, of course the wheel's out of kilter, you, you keep hitting that rut, so it's just a way for you to examine parts of your life that actually aren't going so well and it may be draining some of the energy, okay? So, what, what we're gonna talk about is how to get that energy up to be able to perform at work, so that you're giving your customers your best every day, okay? So, we've got, there's four domains that you draw your energy from, okay? There's the spiritual, the physical, the emotional, and the mental. I really like this image that uh, Māori Health presents. Um, it's a very, it's an interesting model, because the foundation is the spiritual, okay? If you don't have good foundations, you've got no building, okay? The building's gonna be wobbling, okay? So it's the interesting thing about their, 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 uh, their picture there. So look, spiritual energy, we're not gonna to get too much into this tonight, but I just need to reflect on it because it is the most important of all the energy zones, okay? If you don't know what your direction in life is, or where you want, why you want to get out of bed to go to work, it's really hard to get your energy levels up at work. Okay, so if you don't understand where your where your direction in life is, or what your business is doing, or where you want to go with this, then dig deeper. Okay, and search for this because this is what powers the other three energy levels. Okay, there's no point getting fit. There's no point getting uh, mentally strong and emotionally strong if you actually don't know why. Okay, so we're not going to dig too much into this tonight, but it is very important, it's the foundation, okay. Now for some people it could be a, a purpose in their job, some people could be outside their job, some people it's religious, but for most people it's just a purpose, okay. So I'm going to talk tonight about the physical aspects of energy, uh, that's my sort of area of expertise, um, and we're going to talk about diet and uh, sleep and things like this, 
And we're also going to talk a little bit about emotional energy. Uh, Tanya's going to talk a little bit about that. And that's how you cope with stress, anxiety, depression, which we all get in life. But it's how your resilience is to that. And, and some tricks that you guys can use to help that yourself in the workplace when you're having a down day. Okay? And also your mental energy. This is your ability to learn new stuff. So we're all, it's a fast paced world and things move along. To keep up with what things are, you know, new stuff that's happening in our environment, you've got to learn. That means your brain's got to be able to have high energy levels. So having a high energy levels, you know, is the same as having high physical and high emotional and high spiritual. The key to training these areas is the stress recovery principle. Now if you came to a personal trainer and you said, right, I want to get strong and fit, what you do is you stimulate your body in a physical way that's slightly above your comfort zone. Okay? If you're still in your comfort zone, you're never going to get any fit or stronger or faster. So if you take yourself slightly above where you're comfortable, not too far because otherwise you burn out, what your body does is it first of all fatigues and then you get a, a recovery curve. Okay? And you actually become stronger than you were before. And then you hit it again. If you just rest too long, it goes back down to the, to the normal. So if you go for one run, you know, you might get a bit fitter after a day or so, but if you don't go for a run for another week, then you're probably going to go back down to the baseline, or less fit. So when you think about the physical aspects of training your life, that stress recovery curve, we all know what that means. But in emotional and in mental and spiritual, it's exactly the same stimulus. Okay. So if you're feeling, oh, so anyway, the, the most important part of you know, your recovery is sleep. Okay? How many people here would get 10 hours of sleep a night? <laughs> How many people get 9 hours? Yeah, a few more. How many people get 8 hours? Yep. More like it. How many people get 7 hours? Yep. 6 hours? 5 hours? Maybe less. Yep. So, you know, in this day and age, we're getting less and less because, but the average for a human, for an adult, should be about eight hours. Okay. But it's getting less and less. And so, what happens when you get less and less is you get these sort of things going on. You get poor memory, impulsiveness, poor judgment, poor creativity, irritability, and it's well linked to different things like diabetes, cardiovascular disease. Uh, chronic stress intolerance, um, and these sort of things. So, you know, sleep is actually a pretty important part of recovery. Okay? So don't underestimate it. Now, what I'm going to talk about with the physical side of things is these is five key things I need you guys to think about to put into your week every week. Okay? It's really simple if I put it as five fingers. Okay? The first one is cardiovascular. Okay? It's probably, in my opinion, the most important. You have to puff for a period of time, get your heart and lungs going. Now the World Health Organization says 40 minutes, four times a week, at moderately hard levels, or somewhat hard levels. Um, if you go play some football and you actually push harder than that, then you have to work less minutes. So, but in general, if you're just somebody who goes out walking, power walking, and you're somewhat hard, you're looking at 40 minutes, you know, four times a week, if you can. Okay? It is the most important thing. Because it gets all the right hormones going in your brain from which you can get into the day. Now, one of the things that is most underestimated uh, when it comes to strength, uh, to come to fitness, is strengthening. Now, we don't do enough of it. And we go out, and you might go do some walking and some jogging, but we don't do enough of the actual loading of our muscles to keep them strong. Okay, now, under the age of 55, generally speaking, your muscles are just going to get a bit smaller if you don't load them too much. Okay? They, that's what we call atrophy. After the age of 55, who's, who's uh, over 55? <laughs> yeah, so, after the, so we're all going to get there, hopefully. Um, after the age of 55, your muscles start to die off. They start to die. We call this sarcopenia. Okay? And you, you, you can slow that degradation and the death of those cells by loading with weights. So anyone who's over 55, it's not an optional extra to do weight training anymore. You actually should be in the gym. Gym's the best place to do it. 
Okay, it, I mean, there's no doubt about it. You know? We've got plenty of gyms in Taupo. Now, if you don't want to go to the gym, you know, you can do things like TheraBand, or you can do some Pilates, or you can do some yoga, or they're all loading the muscles. Okay, gymnastics, fantastic. But um, that's what stops this muscle turning from a nice, healthy muscle to this wasted, you know, dead, dying muscle. Okay, you can slow that. So, power's the third finger. Okay. Power, it's the ability to turn the strength that your muscles have to speed. Okay? Can you actually move from one place to another with a bit of speed? Can you jump off things? Can you play a game of touch? If somebody offers you a game of squash, can you keep up with it? Or are you, you know, slogging it out? So, no, that's the third finger. So you need to have something in your week that's going to challenge that system. The fourth point finger is flexibility. Now, in our jobs, we bend a lot. In fact, in our days, we bend a lot. All you guys here sitting here right now are flexing. You're sat in the seat flexing. Okay? And we do this a lot. How many people spend time on a computer? Flexed. You know, so 4,000 times a day on average. And how many times do we stretch? Hardly ever. You know? So what the cumulative effect of that is, is this. <laughs> Turn into little old bent backs. Okay? Or do you want to be buff like this guy? Yeah, that's, you know, that, that's where you want to be, okay? When you're, when you're 80. Alright, so stretch, really important. And it's particularly stretch backwards, okay? Do the opposite of what you're constantly doing during the day. Alright, so stretch. Balance is the last finger, okay? Challenge your balance system some stage during your day. Okay? It just means standing on one foot. You know? Throw a ball yourself. You know? Round your back, up round You used to do it when you were young. You've still got to be able to do it all your life. So when you turn 60, you're not falling over and breaking a hip. Not 60, hopefully 70 or 80, but you know. So these are little tricks you can do, you know, just walking down a line without falling over, you know. Um, so why is this important? When you exercise, you release some really good hormones in your body, okay, that gets your brain ready for the day. And it gets you interacting um, with your clients, your, your um, customers, and it allows your brain to be sharp. Now, when you get depressed, it's essentially non-exercise is a depressant, and it makes your brains not work so well. So you're not gonna be so sharp with your customers. So exercise is a really, important thing for you guys to put into your life so that you can give energy at the beginning of the day the same at the end, at the end of the day. Okay, so you're not dropping down. Okay, so exercise is really important. However, it's not as important as eating the right stuff. Okay? Exercise, I can't underestimate it, but you know, diet is so important. Okay, if you don't get that right, the exercise doesn't go all the way. So I'm going to hand you over to Katie now, who's going to talk you through that. Thanks, Colin. Um, hi, everyone. Like Colin said, my name is Katie, and I am a registered dietitian. So today we're just going to talk briefly about healthy eating and nutrition. So, in 2016, there's absolutely no shortage of healthy eating messages. You go into the supermarket, and on your packet of crackers, one's labelled wheat free, the other one's cholesterol free. You go out to a social gathering and someone's brought along a gluten free dish and they swear by this new diet they're following. And they aren't afraid about telling everybody at home they should all be eating. Um, you go to a cafe for lunch, one salad's raw, another one's paleo, another one's dairy free. Which one to choose? Which one is healthier? Which one is tastier? Um, you go on social media and it's everywhere. Someone's shared a health guru's blog, another person's sharing a picture of their refined sugar-free cake that they've just made. So there's no shortage of these healthy eating messages. They're everywhere and everyone claims to be an expert on nutrition. Your friends, your family, your work colleagues, um, the health gurus, the wellness celebrities. And yet we're all less healthier. In New Zealand, a third of us are obese. That's over one million obese New Zealanders. A quarter of us have prediabetes, and most of us don't even know we've got it. Um, 
In New Zealand, one person dies every 90 minutes from heart disease. And you may say, oh, this doesn't affect me, I'm healthy. Well, actually, it, it kind of does affect you because the treatment of type 2 diabetes and obesity costs this country $1.2 billion every year. That's our taxpayers' money. And it equates to $200 million in lost productivity. I'm sure everybody in this room knows someone who's had their life cut short or their healthful years reduced from a lifestyle-related disease, a heart attack, stroke, diabetes. There are so many different diets out there, each with a different, uh, different name and a pseudo-scientific background. But to be honest, diets don't work. If they did, a third, two thirds of our country wouldn't be obese or overweight, and there wouldn't be a multi-billion dollar diet industry. Do you know anyone that's been on a diet for five years, the same diet for five years? Ten? I don't think so. They're not sustainable. Um, as a dietitian, I use evidence-based practice and information from scientific studies. So when I say there's no evidence that your juice cleanse will make you healthier or cure your disease, or there's no evidence that your paleo diet will reverse autism, it can be challenging, especially when these when my opinions go against the popular, popular opinions around. <coughs> Refined sugar free. Don't even get me started on this one. Just because your bliss ball or your cake contains no refined sugar does not mean that it's sugar free. Honey, maple syrup, coconut sugar, brown rice syrup, agave syrup, it's all sugar and it's just got a fancy name and an expensive price tag. So I say, let's say no to bad diets. Instead, let's work on changing your existing diet. Science shows that making small changes to your current diet is a lot more achievable than starting a whole new diet with strict rules. Let's end the diet wars. There's no one perfect way of eating. It's just like with exercise. We don't promote walking over cycling or running over swimming. All exercise is good. We know this. It's actually the same with nutrition. Despite what the media will have you to believe, um, most of the nutrition experts around the world actually agree on a theme of eating, and that will promote health. And when we're talking health, we're talking about longevity and vitality. More years in life and more life in years. Stole that from David Katz. Um, and so what's this theme of this healthy eating? It's real food. It's plant-based foods. So it's fruit and vegetables, whole grains, nuts and seeds, legumes. So those are our lentils, our baked beans, chickpeas, those types of foods. And then maybe or maybe not an addition of some lean meat, seafood, and dairy. Have you guys heard of the Blue Zones? No? Okay. Let me enlighten you. Um, so they are different geographic areas located around the globe where they've found that the people living there have less rates of disease. So there's less cancer there. There's less heart disease. There's less diabetes. And they all live a much longer life. There it's kind of not unusual to live to 100. So what's the trick? What's the magic pill they're all taking? Well, hopefully, if you've got anything from my speech so far, is that there is no magic pill or secret food that they're all taking. They, but what is it? What are they? What are they eating? So they actually all eat different foods. From Okinawa in Japan, where they eat rice and fish, to Sardinia in Italy, where they eat whole grains, olive oil, and beans. But they all are all really healthy, and their diet consists of minimal processed foods, lots of plant-based foods, whole grains, legumes, and smaller amounts of meat. And the famous words of Michael Pollan, eat real food, not too much, mostly plants. And remember, everything in moderation, um, and a treat is not a treat if you have it every day. So, we now know that science favours making small changes to your current diet. So we want to start with what you're eating now and ways we can improve it. Did you know that two thirds of kiwis don't meet the recommended ser uh, three servings of vegetables a day? So maybe that could be somewhere to start. S simply adding some more vegetables into your diet. So I've put this health plate model on one of your handouts. 
to get it to take home. And ideally this is what we want to work towards and that hopefully on our dinner plate this can be the sort of proportions that we want most of the time. So we want about a fifth size serve of carbohydrates. So that's your whole grains, your brown rice, brown pasta, your potato and kumara, um, quinoa, those types of foods. And then we want a palm size serve of meat. So the men in the room have got a bigger palm, so you guys get more meat. It's not fair. Um, what was it? It's not a hand. No, sorry, it's not a hand, it's a palm. That's, that's the recommendation. It's the thickness, the thickness of your palm. I've got two palms. And now it's just one. You can work your way down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so that's our meat, ideally lean. And you can also use the meat alternatives, so that's your eggs, your legumes, like we talked about before. And then we want half our plate to be made out of our non starchy vegetables. And, you know, some of you may, think, may be thinking that this half plate of vegetables, well, that's so far away. But that's okay. We all have to start somewhere. And maybe just adding a serve of vegetables to dinner is huge. And that's okay. It's all, it's all good. Small changes are more likely to stick. So we want to make small changes. Okay. Healthy work snacks. So there's some different options. So you can take some raw nuts to work and have a handful a day as a snack. You could take some whole grain crackers to work and take different toppings to have each day, maybe some cottage cheese, some marmite, some peanut butter, some tomatoes, some hummus, um, take a pot of yogurt, store it in the fridge, take some fruit to work, or some vegetables. Studies have actually shown that those people that eat fruit and vegetables at work are um, happier, more creative, and more engaged at work. So if you're serious about providing your customers with great service, making smart decisions about what you put in your mouth will give you a valuable edge. Breakfast. Who had breakfast this morning? Put your hand up. Nice. Good. Good work. So why do we want to eat breakfast? Well, your performance at work is going to be better. Increased concentration, increased alertness, and improved performance. And breakfast is also linked to lower cholesterol levels, and better overall diet, and better weight control. So start your day right. Eat breakfast. What are some options? We've got your egg, poached egg on toast with some vegetables. Uh, if you don't have time to cook an egg in the morning, you can do a big batch of eggs, hard boiled them, store them in the fridge, they'll last for a few days in there. You just bring one out, chop it up and put it on your toast. You could have porridge with ideally milk and fruit, not cream and brown sugar. Um, and if you want something a bit quicker, you can go for some whole grain bread with some peanut butter and marmite, um, or your typical wheat mix with some fruit and milk. Lunch. Eat it. I know a lot of you will tell me that you're really busy at work and maybe you don't have time for lunch. But lunch is actually really important because it refuels you. And for those of you that haven't eaten since breakfast, you need that refueling. And worse, if you haven't eaten since the night before and know your morning coffee does not count as food, then you need to refuel yourself. So what should you be having? We want, once again, this sort of balanced approach. We want some protein. So whether that's your lean meat, your fish, or your meat alternatives. We want some carbohydrate, some whole grains, leftover potato or kumara, and we want some vegetables, so that could be salad greens or some leftover cooked vegetables. And when we're talking about foods, let's not villainise any one nutrient. You can bet your bottom dollar that those people living in the blue zones are not talking about eating low carb or low fat. And people will say, oh, it's not the sugar that's killing us, it's the fat, or it's not the fat that's killing us, it's the sugar. But actually, no one nutrient is responsible for early deaths and chronic disease. It's the excessive consumption of processed foods that's leading to this. And if you're worried about how much sugar is in your banana, just chill. Let's focus on eating real foods, and the nutrients will take care of themselves. And for anyone that's wondering, banana is a great food choice. It's, fruit is full of nutrients and health-promoting properties. So we want to eat fruit. But fruit juice, on the other hand, is another story. So you have a glass of fruit juice that could contain five to seven serves of fruit in it. And you drink it and you're not really that full afterwards, you probably have some food with it as well. Whereas if you sat down and ate five to seven apples, firstly you probably need to do that, and secondly you'd be feeling really full. So let's stick with fruit because you're going to eat less of it, and 
Also, fruits being shown to be associated with a reduced risk of diabetes, whereas fruit juice intake increases your risk of diabetes. So, as you can see, nutrition is a minefield of topic, and 15 minutes really isn't that long to talk on it. Um, and everyone has an opinion on nutrition. And with social media, these opinions spread like wildfire. But I ask you this, would you trust someone who's just read a book on building bridges to build your bridge for you to drive over? I think not. Would you trust someone who's just watched a video on YouTube on how to take out teeth? Would you trust them to remove your wisdom teeth? Probably not. So why then do you let people who are not experts on nutrition influence your eating habits? I've got some credible um, websites on you guys' handout. So there's the Healthy Food Guide website, they do a little magazine, medicine at the supermarket, but they've also got a website where they've got heaps of credible advice and awesome recipes. Uh, My Family Food has got heaps of good sort of cheap kiwi hearty meals. And then the New Zealand Heart Foundation and Diabetes NZ have got information on both those conditions and some good recipes. At the end of the day, we need to remember that healthy eating is a journey. It's not going to happen overnight and changing your way of eating is difficult. There's unhealthy food available everywhere, and we eat it. It's, it's a natural response, you know? This stems back to our ancestors, our Stone Age ancestors. When they found food, they ate it because they didn't know when they were gonna be eating next. Whereas with us, we've got unhealthy food available 24 seven right at our fingertips. And so we've all gone bigger, it's only natural, you know? We're responding naturally to an unnatural environment. And to add to that, we're up against a really tough competition. When the likes of Coca-Cola spend 4.5 billion per year in marketing. So yes, it's gonna be hard. But small sustainable changes do add up. And something as simple as adding less sugar into your coffee or less sugar onto your wet books in the morning is important. Even if you can take one nutritional tip away from you and start on your journey to love the food that loves you back. That would be awesome. So let's make healthy eating a priority in our lives and we'll reap the benefits of not only feeling better, but working better, living longer, and being well and healthy in those extra years lived. Thank you. I'm here today to talk about well-being more in a mental and emotional sense. 
And I'd like to explore with you the impact of thoughts on our feelings and then on our behaviours and the ripple effect that continues to happen with others in our lives. And I'd like to explore with you perhaps ways that we can manage this phenomenon. So, because I've been asked to run a workshop, not just stand up here and lecture to you, I'm going to get you all working. Oh, great. Excellent. So the first thing I'd like you to do is hold your palm out from you like this. Keep your arm up as high as you can. I know you're all good, strong, healthy people. Now imagine that you've got a marble in the palm of your hand. Just a little marble, not too heavy. Imagine that this marble represents any and all of your unhealthy thoughts. Just today's ones. Just keep it manageable, all right? Just today's unhelpful thoughts and feelings. So in your palm of your hand you have a marble which represents all and any unhelpful thoughts and feelings you've had today. Maybe you'd like to imagine that your marble's got a cup. Close your palm, but keep your arm up so that you don't drop your marble. Remember, this imagined object is only small like a marble. Keep your arm up while we're talking. So, you'll hear me use the term unhelpful thoughts. Unhelpful thoughts <coughs> refer to anything that creates an uncomfortable feeling in your body. Predominantly thoughts are automatic. <coughs> They're just out there floating around, boom, they pop into your head. No real rhyme or reason, they just keep coming. Some of these thoughts are positive and supportive, yet some of them are unhelpful. Research shows that on average, a normal, whatever that means, person has approximately 50 to 70,000 thoughts a day. It's popping into the head. Now, 80% of those thoughts tend to be unhelpful. <laughs> so that's approximately 40,000 unhelpful thoughts a day for a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> We're our own worst critics. The stories we tell ourselves are things that we wouldn't dream of saying to anybody else. <laughs> and let's face it, if you're giving yourself a hard time in your head, and it's going to be hard to be light-hearted and friendly. It's going to be hard to go to work with a good attitude and provide good customer service. So, if the thoughts in your head are unhelpful, if you don't like the way you're telling yourself, stop it. Stop it. Stop doing it. Back to that marble you're holding. My guess is that for some of you, the marble is starting to get a little bit heavy. You feel it weighing on your arm. Funny that, because it's only a imaginary marble. <laughs> right? And you feel like you can no longer hold the marble. I want you to turn to the person on your right. If you haven't got a person on your right, just imagine. <laughs> and I want you to say to the person on your right, I am unable to hold this any longer. Just a minute. Just a minute. Hold your mother, hold your mother. If you are that person on the right that someone turns to you and says, I am unable to hold this mother on you, please respond with, let me hold that for you. Quite similar. 
that we as a human species are actually quite similar even in our differences. A lot of our unhelpful thoughts are around other people's opinions of us, for one thing. What are they going to think? What are they going to think? Well, actually, who cares? It's interesting how one unhelpful thought snowballs. This has a snowball effect. For example, you know, you might be thinking something like, I'm going to be late. I'm going to be late. I'm going to be late again. Shit, I'm always late. Oh, they're going to think I'm unreliable. Oh, no, I'm going to lose my job. So I've gone from I'm going to be late to I'm going to lose my job. Not that helpful. What about something like, hmm, I'm not very good at sport. I'm too unfit to join a team. I'm going to embarrass myself. Nobody wants someone on their team that's not very good. Oh, I haven't got time anyway. So we've gone from joining a team to not nah, having got time. In approximately two seconds. All right? So the other important thing to be aware of is that we all have different capacities to hold these unhelpful thoughts and feelings. Some of you have been able to hold them out a lot longer than other people. Some of you will be determined to hold that marble no matter how sore your arm is. All right? Some people are like that with their emotional processes. There ain't no way I'm handing over none of this to anybody. Let's just take a moment to reflect on that exercise. Consider how the longer you held the marble, the more strain and stress you put your body under. Emotional stuff is the same. It actually puts physical strain on your body. I get a headache, I get a sore neck, I don't feel so well, I'm too tired, I'm anxious, I'm not going. Consider what it was like asking someone to hold it for you. What's it like? I can't hold this anymore. Can you hold it for me? I want to acknowledge that the concept that the longer I hold my unhelpful thoughts and feelings, the heavier they become, the more stress and strain they put on my well-being. Okay? Offloading, sharing, talking to someone who's actually willing to listen in a kind and considerate manner is one of the quickest and most successful ways to relieve the stress <coughs> and to develop a healthier state of well-being. I cannot emphasize to you enough the concept and value of not isolating yourself, not hiding in your room or refusing to talk to people, but staying connected to your support people. Not just sharing your good things, but sharing those hard things as well, all right? So, thoughts are a bit like water, in the sense that they're fluid, they're always moving, they're influenced by outside stimulus, and like water, thoughts take the path of least resistance. So water runs over a rock and eventually we get a groove, and then the water will always run that way because that's where the groove is, it's the path of least resistance. And thoughts are very similar. The more I think something, the more that synapses, those little neuro-link thingy genies in your brain, are developed. The more I think something, the stronger that synapses becomes, whether it's a positive thought or a negative thought. The more I think it, the more strong that thought becomes until it's so well developed that it's almost an automatic default setting. My thought patterns just go that way. And that happens whether they're true or not, and whether they're helpful or not. So you can be telling yourself a lie a thousand times and you'll believe it. Because that pathway has been so well developed. So it sort of starts like a small drop of water, drip, drip, drip. You get a puddle, the puddle fills up, you get a little creek, stream, a river. Next thing you know, we've got a lake or an ocean. That's fantastic if they're positive thoughts. However, if that lake is unhelpful thoughts, we might just drown in them. Or we might spend a lot of time just treating water, trying to keep your head up. 
So the ripple effect. Also, like water, our thoughts, one drop creates a ripple effect. One thought creates a ripple of energy and we have a feeling. And then the feeling creates a ripple of energy into a behaviour. So how we think affects how we feel, how we feel affects how we behave, and then we start thinking about our behaviour, and we start feeling about the thinkings of how we behaved, and round and round it goes. Once again, fantastic if you're under 20% of positive thoughts, not so good if you're in the 80% of unhelpful thoughts. So you should all have a worksheet, or work, or it looks like this. Please note, you do not have to share this exercise with anyone. This is just for you, okay? So find a pen, if you've got one, if you haven't got a pen, just do it in your mind. Let yourself get settled. Maybe take a deep breath or two, just calm yourself. Alright? Now what I want you to do is catch a thought about yourself. Just one. Just give yourself a moment. Think about who am I, what am I, who am I, what am I. Catch that thought. Write it down in the thought bubble. Alright, now it appears to do it in your mind. Take a moment to repeat that thought. Just let it play in your mind. I am, I did, I was, I should have. Then start to identify what feeling is coming up as you think this thought. What feeling is starting to stir? If you find you're having trouble to name the feeling, let's take a moment, maybe close your eyes, take the thought over, Start to notice any sensations in your body. Is the feeling in your chest? Is it in your belly? Perhaps it's in your head. And you can identify the feeling, write it into the heart box. Remember, this is your experience. There are no right or wrong answers. <coughs>
Take a moment to consider what direction that thought was going to take you in. Acknowledge the connection between what you thought, how you feel, and what you're going to behave like. So how do we find a way to balance this? How do we find a way to work this out? And a way to watch to honour ourselves and our thoughts and our feelings while measuring the truth of them, working on them, not to let them become all-consuming and driving our bus of experience, but taking some control over them, over our thoughts, over our feelings, and over our behaviours. So like a fork in the road, we have a choice. We can go this way, or we can go that way. And with our thoughts, the great thing is, is that if we realise we're going off down the wrong road, we can actually stop and we can come back to the fork in the road. The power is at the intersection. Which way do I want to go? But come back to the intersection where the power is and make a choice. So we can reframe a thought, right? Obviously it's like learning a new language. It takes practice, but it is possible. So the best way to reframe a thought is with an opening statement that starts with something like, even though. All right? For example, I'm at work, a customer comes in, they've obviously been having unhelpful thoughts and got unhelpful feelings because their behaviour is unhelpful. So the customer comes in and thought pops into my head, this customer is so rude. All right? which is most likely going to result in me having a feeling of hostility, resentment. And then my behaviour is going to be really challenging for my behaviour to be warm and friendly. I might be able to plant on a nice false smile, because I'm a customer service superstar. <laughs> but that's false behaviour, all right? So, to reframe the thought, the customer is rude. So I'm going to reframe the thought, even though customer is rude, I'm going to stay in my positive power, and I'm going to do the best I can. And when I start to think like that, what happens to my feelings? I start to feel determined. I start to feel hopeful that I can do that. I start to feel a bit more positive. Perhaps I even start to feel proud. So when I'm feeling those things, what's my behaviour going to be like? I'm going to be able to smile more genuinely. I'm going to be able to attend to their needs warmly. It's not going to be such a strange experience. So a positive thought, positive feeling, positive behaviour. Using the key phrase, even though. Even though, I felt really anxious about coming to talk to all you people today. Oh, that's right, I know what I'm talking about, and I'm probably never going to see any of you again anyway. That's <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, my guess is that you're all starting to understand this concept, is that right? Yep. Well, I need to go back to the beginning and start again. Everybody's getting it? Cool. So, our thoughts affect our emotions, and then we behave in response to how we're feeling whether that's unhelpful or otherwise. The bottom line is, if you're thinking unhelpful things about yourself, about other people, about the world in general, about your job, then you're not going to be feeling so good and you're not going to be behaving so good. However, if you think positive things, you're going to feel positive and you're going to be able to interact with other people, friends, family and customers in a better, more positive, more helpful, warm way. So, what I've come to learn in life is that part of staying positive in the world is around your energy levels, as Colin talked about. All right? So I'd like to explore the concept of well-being using the trusty teapot. Imagine you are a teapot. Alright, just a minute, it's okay, you don't have to pose. All your thoughts, your feelings, your behaviours, 
your interactions with others determines the flavour of the tea in your pot, all right? The flavour of it and the strength of it, what's brewing eternally. So start to consider how different activities, different places, different people, different thoughts, feelings and behaviours flavour your tea, flavour your energy, flavour what's happening inside of you. Start to consider what makes your tea sweet and warm and what makes it cold and bitter. As you start to become aware of the differences between what influences creating sweet tea and bitter tea, that is the point where you're at the crossroads. That is where you're in your power. When you start to be conscious and thinking about your choices, how does this influence my energy? You can start to choose this awareness through asking yourself, how will this flavour my tea? Start to consider how you can develop strategies that support you to fill your own teapot up. Some of this may happen through contact with people. Some of this may happen through time alone. Some of you like might fill yourself up with music or exercise or creating masterpieces. Let's sweeten your tea. Whatever it is that makes you smile, do that stuff. You know, this is your life every day. Who knows when it's going to end? Do the stuff that makes you smile, that makes you sweet and warm. Alright? Now consider that every time you have an interaction with another person, friend, family, customer, you're pouring them a cup of tea. You're giving them some of your energy. What sort of tea are you giving these people? Okay? If you've had a morning of unhelpful thoughts and feelings, what's your tea like? I really want you to take the time to notice your interactions with other people, all right? Are there people in your life that want a cup of tea all the time, but they never put anything in your pot? And they leave you feeling drained and empty. Think about how much tea we give to other people with never having our pot refilled. What's that like? Do we have the courage to acknowledge when our teapot is empty? You know, sorry mate, can't do it. I need to take care of myself today. You know, is that such a bad thing? Do we take the time to refill our own teapots in our lives? Or we're so busy, you know, get up in the morning, get the kids ready, make your husband lunch, send him off to work, quickly get ready, get in the car, get to work, make sure the boss is happy, do the job, da da da, go home, Get the washing off the line, make a dinner for everybody else, go to bed. Actually, what did I do for myself today? Well, I didn't eat McDonald's for lunch, just Kate's watching. <laughs> okay, so do we choose to be with other people we know will help to fill us up? Can we and do we let people know that our pot is empty? So that perhaps actually they may fill out and they pour us a cup of tea. You know, we're not all mind readers. Some of us might be. Most of us aren't. We don't know. We don't know when someone's on empty. People are really good at pretending everything's all right when they're not. All right? Start to decide for yourself what flavour and strength do you want your tea to be? Because the bottom line is only you can create that. Start to explore and create more ways of having these experiences that make you smile. Every opportunity you can. Get out there, live life, get your grins on. So one of the things I've learned about filling my own teapot is the attitude of gratitude. You know? Being thankful for what I have, who I am, all that the world has to offer, despite whatever's happening in Orlando or wherever, you know, the world is a pretty amazing place. And when my teapot is feeling a little bit empty, I like to count on my fingers. Just take a moment and count on my fingers. What am I grateful for right now? If I'm really struggling, the first thing I do is be grateful I've got five fingers. <laughs> yeah. 
Then I'd be grateful I have the ability to count to five, twice, sometimes. <laughs> and then, of course, there's this mighty lake out there. I mean, wow, we live in one of the best spots in New Zealand. So on that note, I'd like to express my sincere gratitude to all of you for giving up the time to be here tonight and listen to all of our presentations. I'd like to be, express my gratitude to you all for the customer service that you give to people in Taupo because as a customer I know when I go into a shop and I get good customer service, that fills my teapot. When I go into a shop and the person's, whatever they might be, just save the adjectives, I leave empty or I leave cold. Alright? So thank you. You know. Thank you for taking one for the team. Customer service is not an easy job. If you're doing it, if you're nominating yourselves or you're being nominated for these awards, you're doing something right. Good on you. Of course, a big thank you to the Stellar Awards for acknowledging customer service and giving us all the pat on the back that we deserve. And a huge thanks to Aspiring Health. You do great work in the community. And so again, make your choices. Do the things that make you smile. And remember, the bottom line is only you are in charge of how you feel. Choose happiness. Yeah. for taking your time out to come tonight to speak to everyone here. Um, I hope that everyone takes home a little reminder tonight. It may not be something new, you may have heard it before, whether it's to go for that extra walk, maybe go to the gym, a few more veggies on the plate, I kind of know that, we don't do it. Um, but the, the, the positive thought thing, stop the negative ones and go to the positive, that's a really great one to take home. So um, most of you will have had on your chair somewhere those little vouchers. Some are beauty, some are physio, some are massage. Those are all courtesy of Aspiring Health. You can swap them with someone else if you don't want the one that was on your seat. There's also a number of them at the back, so if you want a different one, you can swap there as well. Um, these have just magically appeared. There's a number of vouchers for 14 free days that empower fitness. Is there, did you bring them? No, I didn't You want one? Okay. <laughs> There are two other things I need to remind you of. If you're a star performer, those applications are due on the 1st of July. So if you haven't done it yet, that's fine. you still got a bit of time, but don't let that deadline slip past you. For all of the teams, the Innovation Award is there. Now you know you're doing it, you know you're innovative in your businesses, so think about that one little thing you do that's different and turn in your applications for the Innovation Award as well.